right. whatever that is. Right. What is going to stop this now? Well, I'm not sure it can be stopped just because we now have so many companies that I think are going to be strapped uh, that a recession certainly, if not on the table here right now. I know, uh, look at our guests who've been here before. We remember the day, t- a terrible Tuesday, the day after the crash, we did have the Federal Reserve come out and say they'll make all liquidity necessary. I certainly think that that's reasonable. That was a one-line statement, and it, it made it so that the market was able to open at least. Uh, I do think that I know the president is calm, and that's great, uh, But I, because we do want calm heads. Uh, we obviously, with this, there were less... Rancor. But how about $500 billion Treasury issue? Yes, it needs Congress. Almost no interest costs uh, to be able to make sure that when people are sick, they don't have to go, uh, go to work. And companies that are really in trouble because of that can still make their, their payroll. How about a credit line backstopped by, instead of having just be a run on every single bank, by the Federal Reserve? I know the Federal Reserve say you can't do that. I know Congress can't do it. Everyone is going to say what they did in 2007. I can't do that. I can't do that until they did it. But it was too late. A lot of people lost their jobs. Why not suspend the buyback rules? Have them go all day. Uh, why not have funds to tide over uh, with that $500 billion money uh, so that companies can make their payroll? And then, look, I know the president likes the lower oil price, and that's good. But the, he should still try to fault the strategic petroleum reserve, maybe put a floor on oil because of all the companies that are in trouble. Those are just some ideas kicking them around. But what's really important important is that we don't get into a mode where they tell the press, we can't do that. No, that requires this. That requires that. Because we heard all that already. We but did that you, in 2007. Are, are and you, they ended up doing everything. Are you saying that stocks are not going to stop going down until we get those kind of measures? I mean, that, yeah. everybody wants to know the same question. Well, not when all is stocks. this going to stop? Not all stocks. I mean, I, I see companies that can be bought, but they're not companies that I necessarily regard as being bedrock companies. I mean, we need to make it so that a Boeing is not in trouble. Boeing got its revolver down. Now, if everybody pulls the revolver down, well, if everybody pulls the revolver down at the same time, Steve, mm-hmm. then we know no banking will stand. That. Right, right. I mean, then we're in back in that potter's field. We're back in the, it's a wonderful life. Yeah. So yeah. we have to stop that. We have to make people feel those credit lines are guaranteed so the banks are still willing to do them. And then, not only would I want to buy stocks, but I'd be saying, how did I miss that? So let me do this. Let me bring in Jonathan Krinsky um, because he has a real good read through the technicals, and he's been he's been pretty spot on um, over time with this sort with with this sort of stuff. Jonathan, what do you see that gives you an idea about where we are and where this market may go next? Yeah. So thanks, Scott. So the last day or two, we've started to see some major capitulations across all asset classes, the likes we really haven't seen. Uh, since 2008 and percent looking out one month later. Now, the one case where that didn't work was early October 2008. Um, but I'll note, when, that, when it hit it in October 2008, the VIX was at 40. We're currently at a 70 VIX. So in our eyes, there's actually more fear right now than there was at that point in early 2008. Um, so to us, this is all part of a tradable bottom. As far as levels, we're looking at 2,700. Clearly, that didn't, didn't hold. Um, it's possible we get one more flush and even get all the way down to the December 2018 lows around 2350. We don't think we get that low. We think we're, we're closer to a bottom than not. But those are just some of the extremes that we're looking at um, to try to find out a bottom here. Can I just, why, why do you not think we go to those lows? I mean, that's, we remember that time. I remember, Scott, you're talking to Jeff Gunlock, very good theory if things weren't changed. Powell then changed his mind, but that was because we were on the eve of a Fed created recession. You're on the eve of a corona-related recession. Do you really think that those stocks can't go right back to those levels? Hey, Jim, any, anything is certainly possible. An- another stat, though, that we, that we look at here, um, the amount of stocks in the S&P hitting a 52-week low hits 63% today. It's only been exceeded one other time in the modern era. That was October 10th, 20, 2008. Uh, on that day, we had a very similar situation. We were down about 8% in the morning lows. We actually rolled over and made a bottom around 2 p.m., closed the day down around 1 percent, and then the next day was up 13 percent. And then, of course, we know we did roll over. So, um, you know, we're not saying this is the bottom, but we think traders can start to pick at some spots here. And look, we're not ruling out a move to the December 2018 lows. um, But I think when you start to look at some of the indicators, 
Uh, and look, we're not perma bulls. We'll, we'll be the first to say when you think you should get out of the market. I think when there was the most amount of certainty in this mm -hmm. market mm -hmm. that people would say was January 20 of this year, that was in fact one of the worst times to buy. So when there's absolutely no certainty, uh, we think that's when you want to start looking at stocks. The, uh, the Dow, Ron, was just mm -hmm. down 9.5%, 2,250 points. So, How do you see things here? Well, Scott, when I was growing up in the business, the early days, if you had a 10% single-day decline, we would call that a crash back in the early part of my career. Now it's a little bit more commonplace to see moves uh, not quite this large, certainly, because this is way outside uh, normal ranges. Um, to uh, Mr. Krinsky's point, well, one thing I would say with respect to liquidity and credit, Right. We, we now have correlations going to one. Everything is being sold off at the same time. I consulted with one of my colleagues at Schroeder's, Michelle Russell Dow, who runs our securitized debt team. And we've talked to people inside our debt teams across the board. We're seeing illiquidity in U.S. Treasuries. As Steve Leisman was talking about this morning, the bid ask spread in Treasuries has widened. We're seeing that in mortgage securities. We're actually seeing it in high quality municipal bonds, which means there are strains in the system. And unless as Jim suggests, you come in with, he calls it a Manhattan Project, I call it a Marshall Plan, FEMA-like response. Whatever it is, it's hard to get close to a bottom when it appears that the federal government and the Federal Reserve are still resisting this kind of kitchen sink approach to putting a floor under the markets and a floor under the economy. Didn't hear it from the president, and, and I, know, I know Jim doesn't want to be critical, but I have to say the speech last night and his comments this morning do not engender the type of confidence you would have hoped for coming from the leader of the free world. There, there, some will say that the market reaction um, is, uh, is backing that view up.